we call it exploring creativity. And I suppose if we think of the moonshots that Luis just mentioned, what everybody wonders is how we can be creative and new in the way we think about these things. And like it or not, you three are associated with creativity. The discoveries you've made of groundbreaking and people look to you for thoughts about how they should be creative. So I know it's a difficult question, but may I ask each of you just to give a very, very short reflection on what it takes to be reflective, but thinking particularly of the younger members of the audience who are thinking how to be that. Go on, David, oh, why don't you start? <laughs> you make me do it first again. Um, <laughs> I'll give a different answer from last night. I, I think in science, the one thing I would tell a young person is not necessarily to be creative about solutions, but be creative about questions. And what I mean by that is often people are faced with grand challenges we're told about. And this is where other people define the problem for yeah. you. If you actually look back over the history of science, so many advancements were made by people who did not attempt to work on grand challenges. They decided to work on things that they were excited about, that they thought would be valuable to the Earth, even though no one else was thinking about doing it. So to me, I would always encourage people, if you can, try and imagine how the world can be different in a way that you would think would be very valuable. And then once you have the question, you can spend 10 years, you can spend 20 years trying to come up with a solution, but at least the question you've solved is the hard part. And finding that right question is the great, is the, is the great goal. How, how do you recognize the question when it arises? For me, I mean, the way I look at it is that I sit and I, this will sound the most <laughs> terrible answer, but I literally sit and every 10 years or something, something will happen where I go, I think to myself, that is a really, really, really cool question. And it's the word cool, and I don't know how to explain what that cool means, but I just know in my heart of hearts, it's a cool question, and I believe if we can solve it, that actually will have an impact. That's what I really believe. That's a good answer. It's a good answer in a cool, cool country like Brazil, <laughs> isn't it? <Yeah. laughs> Serge, do you want to tackle that? Uh, I, I think creativity is a word which is concept which is difficult to define but which you recognize immediately just intuitively when you when you find it uh, I have it, it's quite clear that uh, I have colleagues and students who came and start working with me and immediately I recognize whether they have a creative mind or not and and creativity is very different in the arts and in science in the arts creativity is really basic if you if you paint something, or if you write something, uh, or if you uh, uh, make a music, music uh, uh, work, then it's quite clear that if you were not here, nobody else would have done it. In science, it's not the case. So I, I like to think of scientists more like explorers than, than discoverers and not, in, mm. not in inventors. But still, the definition is vague because you have to invent things and you have to invent tools to make discoveries. And great scientists have this creativity to find a way to, co to understand connection between things which looks very disparate, very different. And this link, this connection they make is the scientific creativity. A very good example of that. Einstein was a fantastic example because he, just by the thought experiments that he imagined, he was able to put together, to bring together concepts which before were considered to have nothing to, to do with each other, and this was creativity. Maxwell, too, when he unified electricity, magnetism, optics, connected uh, a knowledge which was there much before him, but he found the way to make the connection, and this was creativity. Mm. So, I'm, so I'm very interested that you said that you can spot immediately when a student comes in whether they're creative. It's, it's intuitively, you can see this guy has the potential to be creative. And uh, this is because you need imagination, intuition, uh, curiosity. And all this is part is necessary for creativity. Not sufficient, but necessary for creativity mm. to occur. Thank you. My Britt, may I ask you? About creativity. So, um, we disagree, <laughs> yeah, Sarge. Okay. Okay. That's good. <laughs> I think everyone 
can be creative in different fields, but you have to know something and you have to use it in a different way. And in science, uh, as I, I told you before, if you don't know it yourself, find the person who is an expert on that field that you re need to know, and then when people who know a lot talk together, mm -hmm. and as we heard from the other panel, so, when the communication is good, suddenly, with this, all this fantastic knowledge, like we discussed yesterday with jazz music, tell me a, a musician who is not good who can make good music. You need to, to train, you have to be good, and in jazz you, you, you are creative when you can use what you know and play with, with, with others. And I, 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 I can give you an example, not from, from my own research, I could do that too, but I, I don't want to be that selfish. I was, uh, as I said, I met the Prime Minister, and at that meeting there was a person discussing a new project, um, a, a grand project uh, where you have to collaborate, and it was about the plague. Do you say plague in mm -hmm. English? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the, it was this question, why did um, the plague arise? Where did it come from? And why was it so? If we believe that the plague came from the rats, and the rats brought all these uh, small uh, lice and insects to humans so that they became sick, why, when it was dry, that was when the, the, the plague was increasing? And then this person, he was collaborating, he is a biologist himself, he was collaborating with, with people who understand the soil, uh, collaborating with historians, uh, and with climate people to, to understand what type of climate was it then. And then maybe it is so that when it's very dry, then the rats are dying, and then the lice would need new hosts. And then you spread the disease. So it was just, I was just sitting, wow, this is so fun. And that is, that is the reward that uh, we scientists can experience, that we start to think in new ways. We are creative. We understand things that we didn't understand before. And then we have the passion. Uh, we follow the passion. We get a bit crazy. <laughs> because with, with science, you almost get so eager that you are insane. Beautiful. Thank you. One of the things I like so much about putting Nobel laureates together is you get to see that they're very different personalities, and I think that's very important. <laughs> any, we have like a minute left. Any comment to each other? Do you disagree? I like the fact you disagree. Any more disagreements? I wouldn't say we, we disagree. I, I, my view on hearing that is we all have very different opinions, but that doesn't mean to say that we're saying it is right or wrong. It's just our experiences of how we see the world, and you know, which makes it wonderful. And I don't know about the, the other two in the panel. I've had the same experience that the thing I love about Nobel Prize winners is they're so different from each other, which was not what I expected. I've only been a Nobel Prize winner for two years, so I expected, you know, I'm joining this club, it's going to be incredible. But you meet, it is incredible, but it's this diversity of, of people that you meet and the way they think differently exactly. that is so fantastic. Exactly. So I think it illustrates what I said, that creativity is very hard to define. <laughs> <laughs> Good, let's stop there. And oh. there's uh, another comment we have to give, and that is, one thing is to be creative and you do things and you get answers to your questions, but you have to see it and act on it yes. when it's given to you. Yeah, yeah. sure. And that is a good point to stop. 21 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? 18 seconds left. <laughs> well, we, as I, I set myself up to be on time, so I better be on time. Um, thank you to all of you thank for you. being on time throughout the day. Um, in a moment, Helena Nader is going to come back on stage and say just some closing remarks. But from, our, from us and uh, from all the panelists, I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed to you all for being here. Uh, it's a long day, and your powers of concentration have uh, been amazing. So thank you very much indeed from all of us. Thank you. Thank you.